interest only versus principal and interest. So today I'm going to be talking the pros and cons of both of these loan structures. And as a property investor, which one will suit you best to your tailored needs at, the, at where you are on your journey? Now, some of the, this home loan, some, sorry, out of these two home loan packages, depending where you are on your journey, there's going to be a time where you want to be using one of these packages to help you with your journey. So let's get into it. So let's start off with principal and interest. So principal and interest is when you're paying the principal of the property down and you're paying interest on the loan that you've borrowed from the banks. So for example, let's, for, for example, let's just say we get a loan of $300,000 of $300, and we've purchased the property at three thirty. dollars So you put a 10% deposit down of $30,000 and you've got a loan of $300,000. Now you have, you're paying you know, your interest on that $300,000 that you borrowed from the bank. As well, every single month, you're gonna be paying a small portion of those monthly repayments are going to go towards the principal repayments. So then that loan of $300,000 is actually going to decrease as every single month you make those repayments. So you're, initially, you're paying down the property. Now, what are some of the advantages? Like I've stated already, you're paying less interest over time of the loan. You're paying lower interest com rate compared to your Print, uh, sorry, your interest only rate. So normally a principal and interest rate will be a lot cheaper than an interest only. But saying that, of course, there is some competitive markets where you know, other banks can give a great uh, interest only period uh, interest rate. And I guess you're paying off the home loan much faster and quicker and sooner. So this is helping you pay down that property faster. And then by the time you're getting towards retirement, you paid a lot of the debt off and the property is helping you more cash flow in your pocket. Now, what are some of the disadvantages? You know, your repayments are higher on an interest on a principal and interest uh, home loan structure, especially at the beginning where you're paying a lot of the debt down or more on the interest repayments and then slowly, slowly you're paying that debt down. And as over time, those repayments will get less and less, but it takes quite some time, especially the higher the, higher the loan. Now, it's not really tax effective as well if you're an investor because those principal repayments, you can't claim on tax. Those interest repayments, of course, you can. So those portion, you're actually losing out on tax tax rebates. And as well, you're getting less cash after, you know, cash surplus after all expenses. So sometimes this can put your property in a negative surplus or a neutral. Now, saying this, depending where you are on your journey, you know, investors will normally use this, pa this uh, package to help pay down that property straight away. Now, depending on where you are after your journey, if you're very at the beginning, if, you, if you're at the beginning of your journey and you're building your first investment properties, sometimes it might be good to you know go down that interest only period. So let's talk a bit more about interest only. So interest only, you're not paying down the principal of the property. Now, so what you're just paying off is the loan that you've taken from the banks. So let's just say you've got a loan for three hundred thousand dollars and you purchase a house again at three thirty and you put a ten percent deposit. That $300,000, you're just paying interest on that money that you've borrowed from the banks. So you're not actually paying down the property. So over time, there's going to be some pros and cons of going down this route. So let's talk about the advantages. You know, your, your lower mortgage repayments for a limited time, depending on how long you have this home loan package on interest only for. So it can be maximum up to five years. So your repayments you know, are going to be much higher, sorry, a lot less than what they are on a principal and interest. As well, it's tax effective. So all that interest you're paying on those on that home loan is actually, you can claim that back on tax. As well, you've got a higher cash flow surplus. So after all your expenses, your property can be in a positive bracket and you're actually getting extra cash flow, which is getting, which you're getting and putting in your pocket after all the expenses are being paid, which is an advantage as a property investor. The disadvantages, you know, I guess your your principal amount is not reducing over the time of the loan. So as well, then your you know your your higher repayments are going to be once you're finishing off that principal uh, interest only repayment. Normally, your principal and interest interest rate will be a lot higher depending on where the current market's at as well. So and saying that or where you are with your personal situation. I guess a high interest rate during the um, interest only period is something that you've got to watch out for because that's going to affect your cash flow. Now, let's talk about, I guess, understanding 
interest only. And the, I guess there's a bit more risk involved when you're going on an interest only period. But if you do the right analysis and you've purchased in the right market at the right time, and you know that property is going to grow in value over time as well, that you know the rents are going to grow in value over time. So by the time when your principal and interest repayment uh, situation comes on and after the five years, you're going to make sure that the property has grown in value and your rent's increased. And so the, your cash flow is not going to actually affect your lifestyle. So this is where your analysis of your property search comes into play. And so this is where as a, as a property investor, you have to understand the risks of principal and interest or more interest only, depending if you're going at the very beginning. So you're not getting stuck where, where, you, where you're getting stuck where the property is actually becoming a negative uh, uh, surplus and it's actually costing you month, uh, every single month to, you know, to hold that property. So as an investor, at the very beginning of your journey, it makes sense to go on an interest only period because your cash flow is a lot higher. So let me show you a diagram. Now I've got both of these properties were purchased at 300,000 and the loan is going to be a 90 slash 10 percent LVR. So your loan's going to be around 270 for both of these properties. Now both of them have got an interest rate of 3%. So as we look at the top one here, a 3% interest only home loan, after all the expenses, this property is putting over $5,000 after all the expenses in their pocket. Now if we look at the same figures, you know, same interest rate, but all we've done, we've gone on the principal and interest. This property in the first year is negative $580. Now, it's not a lot of money. Of course, you're paying down the debt. But if you look at it over five years, you've made $25,000 after, you know, after all the expenses on this property if you've gone on an interest only. Now, that money you can put towards in you know, offset accounts, you can put towards other properties. And so this helps your personal situation. You know, helps you increase your income, and not just that. Depending on your situation, if you're, we're talking more now in your personal finances, where if you're trying to increase your income so you can get more borrowing from the banks, that five hundred, that five thousand dollars is going to go towards your taxable income. So this is where a structure uh, of your personal situation comes into play. To understand, okay, how am I going to increase my income? Make sure I don't get myself into too much debt and then make sure the banks will keep lending me money. So this is where you know, a strategic plan comes in place where you've got a good, trusted, professional mortgage broker and a buyer's agent on your side that can help you and understand the legalities of the finances and understand the legalities of properties and where you're investing so that you're making sure that property grows in value over time, not just your, your capital growth but your cash flow as well so your income is growing over time because that's super important. So hopefully I got you got a lot from this video it gives you a bit of clarity and understanding and you know where you are on your journey. You, of course, if you're someone that's already got multiple properties, eventually you're going to have to be paying down that debt, and that's where you might purchase some properties towards the end of your journey. And you might already have a significant portfolio, and you might might be smart to put some of those properties on principal interest from the very beginning. Or maybe you're buying, buying properties that are very high cash flow, that are commercial property, or, you know, uh, blocks of units or rooming houses, etc., where you can put them on a principal interest from the very beginning, and they're actually still putting a significant amount of money in your pocket after all expenses. So this is this, I'm just going to be painting a picture here for you guys, to give you a bit of understanding and why you want to be using these different loan structures at different points of your career. So hopefully you got a lot from this video. If you did, please give us a like. Um, subscribe to this channel because there's going to be more videos coming out. And we're just trying to educate Australian investors so they know what they're getting themselves into when it comes to property investing.